Hey everybody, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Look who's here. It's the one and only Janelle Monet. How are you? You know, I'm just trying to figure out what day it is, uh, <laughs> what time it is, who I am, where I am. I mean, that kind of fits with the theme of the show, so I think it's good practice. You've already had some practice with it, given everything you went through in the show, right? You know, art imitates life. That's what <laughs> they say. So I got a chance to check out episode one of the new season. And it seems like it's one of those roles that really challenged you as an actor, pushed you as an actor. What was most challenging with the role? Just how to play someone who does not have a memory, you know, who who does not understand who she is, how she got there. I mean, you see my character, Jackie, uh, waking up um, in a boat in the middle of a lake. And you watch her journey to self-discovery to, you know, her trying to uncover her identity. And every time she thinks that she's getting closer to the truth, uh, she gets closer to a lie. So there are lots of twists and turns and plot twists uh, in this season. I know you did a lot of research into mental health, PTSD, amnesia. What was most interesting when you were figuring out how are you going to play this role? Well, I also watched films. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched, you know, other characters who dealt with memory loss. And one of my favorite films was Memento. Uh, I also watched Before I Go to Sleep, uh, which dealt with this, this wife who woke up every morning. Nicole Kidman played her and she just didn't know who she was. And her husband had to like put on sticky note tabs. Uh, you know, little details about her to remind her. And then I watched the the Born Identity mm -hmm. uh, uh, films, you know, with Jason Bourne. And it was how to respond, you know, because I didn't want to play Jackie one note. I didn't want, I didn't want her to just be disoriented the whole time. You know, I mean, I think that after a while, what I learned is when people lose their memories, they're frustrated that they can't remember. They feel inadequate. And they also are on the defense because they're like, who are you going to take advantage of me? Who can I trust? Um, so a part of it had to do with her listening because she's trying to get clues uh, about who she is and the tone and if she can trust this person. And then the other other point was a lot of uh, frustration just in the fact that, that, that she's in this predicament. Yeah, there's a lot of really weighty stuff here. And I think you've had a really interesting career. You're one of these people who's a multi-hyphenate. You can do a lot of things really well. When you think about the acting, what is the coolest part of flexing that muscle and even having the runway of a full season as opposed to just a movie to, to really build out uh, your chops here in the show? Yeah, I, I think I walked away. I mean, each 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 time I do uh, a role, I try to walk away a better a better actor, you know, uh, learn something, you know, from my scene partners. And I had the best scene partners with Homecoming, you know, Stefan James and Hong and you know, just being in a film with Chris Cooper and, and um, Joan Cusack, it, it's just like, you want to be better. You want to, you want to come in ready to play. You want to come in ready to sharpen your sword. You mentioned the fact that art imitates life. And I think about some of the stuff you've done, Hidden Figures and Moonlight and Antebellum that's coming out, like all really culturally important, culturally relevant. How important is it to you to use your art to say something larger? And same thing with this show in terms of mental health and PTSD and stuff like that. It's always great when you can connect a role and connect a film to community and to voices who um, historically haven't been highlighted. Yeah, I, I like those roles. Uh, some things I just do because I like them. They're personal and they'll stretch me and I want to learn about that. And I'll probably do more of that as soon as we can start filming. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to do more comedies. I never want to limit myself. So it's great that I started rooted in this and, and with purpose. Um, every, everything I try to do is intentional, but above all, I go where the universe tells me to go. So you're somebody that inspires people today. Who are the people when you were first starting that really inspired you and influenced you to be the person that you are? I will say, you know, family. You know, family, the joy, the pain, the bad experiences, the bad examples, the good examples, all of it inspired me to make my 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 choices. Uh, yeah, the choices I make are, are directly connected to the choices my parents have made. And it feels like music was a really natural place to kind of let that all spill out. When did you realize you had the creative juices and when did you kind of see the fruits of all that pay off? really when I was born, like they never told my, my family never told me I could not do, do something, especially as it pertained to arts. 
you know, they were always uplifting me, encouraging me, even in times that I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to encourage myself. Um, they never, they never told me I couldn't. And um, when somebody told me I couldn't, I rebelled against that. You know, mm. I was always, I was always the kid who would just go left when the teacher told me to go to the right. You know, sometimes it, it, it got me in a lot of trouble. And uh, I think when it comes to art and creativity, remaining curious and sometimes even rebellious uh, can be a great thing. Yeah, I like that motto. What would you say has been the toughest part of the journey overall? The toughest part of the journey is not getting in your head too much, you know, not not making making everything about you, you know, understanding that um, even though people cater to you and they they like you and they love you and it's your name, just understanding that it takes a village, it takes a team, it takes a family uh, to make things work. And when I was filming Homecoming, I made it a point to make sure that everybody I came encounter with knew just how valuable they were. They were, you know what I'm saying? I try I tried to keep that tone of family. Uh, we are literally dependent on each other. Um, so you know, let's all work hard and let's let's you know forget that my name is number one on the call sheet. That means nothing. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Lastly, for you, when people check this show out, what are the big things you want them to take away thinking? Well, one, I want the, I want them to visually just want to watch this, even on mute. You know, I think we're we're doing you know doing our thing, acting, but like visually, I just oh, I love it. But I wouldn't want you to put it on mute because the score is amazing. So I think that that this series stimulates all the senses. Um, you know, you, you can smell the drama, you can smell the suspense and you can taste, uh, the psychological thriller nature of it all. You can, um, you know, with the shortness, you can see, you know, just how visually, uh, it's such a visual outlier. Like, I don't think anyone in the TV space is doing what homecoming is doing. And there's so many plot twists and, 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 and one of the things that I think is important is, um, how it talks about capitalism and the big machine and, 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 and corporate America and how women are treated in corporate America and, you know, the choices that we're making as a result of that. Um, I love the strong, I love the strong women roles in this, in this, in this season. I also like that we are talking about our vets and how we treat them and how we treat them once they leave and the importance of mental health. Uh, you know, the, the importance of taking care of, of our community. No doubt. Well, Janelle, you're awesome in it. Thanks for hanging out. Best of luck. Stay safe. We'll talk to you down the road. All right. Thank you so much. You take care, DJ.